Well, folks, this is a story about uh, Orkney's big gold rush in the 1970s, or more particularly my part in uh, that exciting time. Now, if you take your mind back to Bury in the 1970s, a um, handful of kids in the primary school, a few teenagers scattered about the island, but it was a quiet place and uh, people like me, boredom sets in quite easily. Although I was lucky because my dad had a wee sailing boat and uh, a little flatty that we would row out to it in. And uh, a lot of my time was spent kicking around the pier or in Duncan's boatyard or uh, in the uh, close proximity with the sea, wherever I was in Bury. Anyway, the other big thing that was going on at the time was uh, the oil and the oil was uh, flowing through Water Sound and onto Flotta. The refinery was working, but there was still a lot of construction work going on and there was an old motorised barge, ancient old thing, uh, running back and forth from Bury Pier, carrying sand and building materials out to Flotta. And it was just like clockwork, every day off it would go uh, full of materials. And uh, one day there was a big excitement, a change to the routine, because an ancient red uh, lorry crane turned up on the, the pier and the sand conveyor was moved to one side. And the job of this ancient crane was to load uh, pallet loads of bricks onto the crop. And I was amazed by the process. This was all very exciting to me. And it got even more exciting because not long into the process, the crane swung a bit too far, went on its side. I don't think anyone was hurt, but uh, a pallet load of bricks went straight off the east side of the pier with a splash. And for a chap like me, that was very exciting. It was slightly more concerning for the Denison Shipping Company, who uh, owned the crop. Uh, not only had they lost their crane and their bricks, but they had uh, created a bit of a, a dead end on the pier because ships or boats couldn't get in alongside the pier because of this heap of bricks lying on the seabed. So every little crisis presents an opportunity for this bored young teenager. And uh, Mr. Dennison himself looked at me, looked at my flatty and said, are you busy? And I said, well, no. Um, so a deal was done. And this is where my part in the Orkney Gold Rush started. Started actually with a trip to Kirkwall on the uh, JD Peace Roadliner to get myself a diving mask. And uh, back I came, and when the tide was out, the bricks were only submerged about five foot, and I was about five and a half foot. So I didn't have to dive down too far to start picking up these bricks and loading them into my dad's little flatty, which had just recently come out of Duncan's boatyard, pristine dark blue and bright orange paint uh, to my very own scheme. Anyway, uh, there I was. Uh, couldn't quite run to a wetsuit, so I was just in my trunks. No one had told me it was going to be quite that cold, so that came as a surprise to me. But uh, with my mask on, down I would go, grab two bricks, and then uh, push myself back up with a bit of a struggle to the surface and a bit of a gasp. And then I was also surprised to find just how heavy these bricks got when you got them out of the water into the fresh air. But anyway, time went on and uh, the flatty got loaded, tide came in, pulled it as high up the beach as I could, unloaded the bricks set off down again on the next low tide and so this went on for a few days with uh, Mr Dennison hovering around on the pier above me with his his big boxer dog Bruno paring down just making sure I was actually getting on with the task at hand. Anyway um, it went on after a few days I was just about at the bottom when I gave myself a right fright grubbing about in the uh, in amongst the last few bricks I dislodged a couple and what appeared, appeared to me to be a, a huge monster came shooting out at me I'm sure it was a killer shark or a, uh, a basking whale or something. But anyway, apparently I came out of the water like a Polaris missile. I was that scared of this thing. No one told me that things are magnified through masks. So end of the job, mission accomplished. Every last brick was piled up in a nice cube on the pier. And uh, Mr. Dennison appeared and uh, I was paid. And there we are, that was kind of the end of the story, but it was sad and it was happy because a year or two later, obviously the building work had finished and uh, the crop was pretty much redundant and I'd gone south to make my own fortune. And uh, one day coming back to see my parents, there was the poor old crop beached up on the east side of the, the Hope, uh, rusting and a bit forlorn. And it was kind of sad, uh, but the old boat lingers on in my memory because uh, it reminds me of the time I uh, started out in my career as a, a salvage bounty hunter. Uh, and I've got my personal memory of the moment and I've got the 20 quid that I earned.